So the final models that we're going to look at within time series forecasting are seasonality and trend. I'm going to go ahead and just jump straight to one that has both trend and seasonality in it. Here we have Terry's Tie Shop. We've already determined that they have three seasons, a Christmas season like in November and December, Father's Day, uh, I guess that's what, end of May, June, and then all other times. So everything else is kind of lumped together. Notice the seasons don't have to be the same length and time. Average weekly sales in dollars during each of the three seasons during the past four years are shown below. So year one and during Christmas, he sold 1856. Uh, during Father's Day 2012, all other times 985. So on the surface at least it looks like season 2 is the heaviest, season 1 comes in close behind and then see the rest of the year relatively slow. Our job is to determine the forecast for the average weekly sales in year 5 for each of the three seasons. So we need three numbers. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to create dummy variables, also called indicator variables. They are one or zero. They represent the seasons. We need S minus one dummy variables, where S is the number of seasons. We have three seasons, so we will need two dummy variables. We will also need uh, to capture the trend. We will also need a time period index. So the first thing I need to do with the data shown in this format doesn't help me much I need each record on a row right so I need 1856 on a row by itself 2012 on a row by itself 985 etc so let me do the following uh, if I open up another sheet and let's call this year season sales time period index uh, and then whether we have season one season two right, or season three I'll put that in there but we'll talk about that in a little bit so what I need to do I have one 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 all right seasons I have one two three I got this four years right and then two, 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 three, three, four, four, four. And then I need to copy over the data. So sales, I'm going to copy this guy. Right click, paste, special where I do transpose. And then I need to do that every time, four times. So not particularly fun but not particularly difficult either. Better than typing, I think. Uh, and then one more time for year four. And then it wouldn't hurt to double check to make sure they're in the right spot. Time period index, we're just one, two, all the way down right, to 12. So then in order to do these dummy variables, There's a 1 if it's in the first season, a 0 if it's not. So in season 2, it can't be in, right? they have to be mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. So we get a 1, 0, 0, then we get a 0, a 1, a 0, 0, 0, whoops, not 9s, 0, 0, 1. So you should see a pattern emerge immediately. Right? Right. So now we're set up where we can run the multiple linear regression using the data analysis tool pack in Excel. So this is ties data rearranged. Right. Where this is our dependent variable and these are our independent variables. So the first thing I said we only needed a two. I put the third one in here because I wanted to show you what happens when you mess up. If you put all three in, it doesn't like it unless you do something special. So let, let me show you the mistake first. So first I need to go to data, over to data analysis, and then regression because that's what we had picked out before for one of the other ones and I hadn't restarted Excel yet. So click OK and it, it thinks I'm still back doing the uh, the, where I checked for the stationary one. 
so my Y range, what I'm trying to predict is sales. So C. Input range, I'm going to do all of these, D through G. Right? I have labels. Output range, let me pick something higher so we can just kind of see what happens. And then when I click OK, I should get an error message. Uh, I don't get an error message, but I do get some funny stuff down here. It says no not a number zero zero so that's not good if you get this this is bad the reason is I can't put all the dummy variables in at the same time unless I set the intercept to zero so let's go back and do it properly so I'm gonna come down here and just delete those guys and then I'm gonna do data analysis regression and here I just want time period index S1, S2. That means that my base season is everything else. That's my low season because it's my base season and it's my lowest value. I would expect S1 and S2 to have coefficients that are positive numbers. So I click OK and I see wow I get a really high R squared and adjusted R squared. I like that. And then I come down here and I see that the intercept is 797 ties. Each time period, I'm adding 36 and a half more almost. Season one, I'm adding 1,095 more. Season two, 1,189 more. We notice that we do have all small p values, so that's a good thing. So, overall significance of the model is very small, is also very important, very small p value. Right? So, that makes me think I have a good model. Right. So now I need to do the forecasting for the next time period. So 13, 14, 15, and that's it, right? Three, three seasons. So this will be, uh, copy this, right? So my forecast for this guy will be the intercept, which was the 797 plus the time period, uh, let me go back here and let me anchor that, plus the time period coefficient, 36 and two-thirds, four or not quite two-thirds, uh, times time period index, plus the S1 coefficient, anchor that, multiplied times S1 time, uh, the indicator variable there, plus S2, anchor that, times the indicator variable for that. And then I see for season one, the Christmas season for year five, I got 2366. For Father's Day, 2497. And for all other times 1344. So those are my forecasts for the fifth year. Now there's another way we could do it but I'll, I'll talk about that in class instead of putting it on the video. Okay. So that is both trend and seasonality. I can see the trend because it's a small p-value so it tells me that there is a trend. Both of these have small p-value so it tells me that there is seasonality. They are statistically significant different from the third and season there. So that covers pretty much everything that we're going to do in forecasting.